He was a freakishly big, tall, gangly kid, all arms and legs like Bambi on Ice kid. He was very lean to play at the top level. He was a championship level player. All this to being part of the Premier League 100 goal club. Peter Crouch had one hell of a football career. Sure, at six foot seven, he might not have looked like your typical footballer, but you don't hold the record for the most headed goals in Premier League history if you're not good. You don't get documentaries made on you if you're not good. You don't make a living from football if you're not good. As he famously explained when asked what he'd be if he wasn't a footballer, Crouch said, a virgin. Coming through the youth ranks of Tottenham, Crouch signed his first professional contract on July the 2nd, 1998. But alas, he didn't get any first team action and was loaned out, including stints at Dulwich Hamlet in the Isthmian Premier League division, and interestingly enough, IFK Hasselholm in Sweden's third tier during the summer of 2000. This Swedish adventure came about when IFK Hasselholm sold John Johnson to Spurs and bagged loan deals for Crouch and Alton Thelwell as part of the deal. Fast forward to July the 28th, 2000, and Crouch found himself at Queen's Park Rangers for a bargain £60,000. This time things started differently, as he made an instant impact, netting 10 league goals in the 2000-2001 season. Sadly though, his heroics couldn't save QPR from dropping to the second division, and with this relegation came a player fire sale. Portsmouth took advantage, buying him for £1.5 million and it paid off as he was even better at Portsmouth than he was at QPR, scoring 18 league goals in 37 starts during the 2001-2 season. In March 2002, he was on the move as Aston Villa came knocking with a £5 million bid and Crouch was off to the Premier League one more time. He scored on his home debut against Newcastle United and finished the season with two goals in seven appearances. His struggles continued the next season with him making 18 appearances without finding the net. Chasing more game time, he went on loan to Norwich City from September to December 2003, where he played 15 times, scored four goals, and helped the Canaries climb up the ladder into the league. His Norwich stint rekindled other clubs' interest in his abilities, and after his three-month loan ended, Crouch returned to Aston Villa and quickly made an impact this time around by scoring a brace against Leicester City, a late winner at Middlesbrough, and the opener against Bolton Wanderers. This purple patch allowed Villa to get a good fee for him, who was sold to Southampton for £2.5 million. Although Crouch initially played second fiddle to James Beattie and Kevin Phillips, things changed when Harry Redknapp took over. He became Southampton's main man up front, scoring crucial goals in their relegation battle, netting memorable goals in a 2-0 win over Liverpool, a 1-1 draw with Arsenal, and bagged a brace in a 3-1 victory at Middlesbrough. He even scored a late-winning penalty to knock his former club and Southampton's arch-rival, Portsmouth, out of the FA Cup. Damn, no one could catch him, and his stellar form meant that the three Lions were interested in his services for the first time. Overall, Crouch scored 16 goals in 33 appearances during the 2004-05 season, but with Southampton's relegation from the Premier League, his future was uncertain. This is the time the Reds of Merseyside came calling, signing him for £7 million on a four-year contract. If Crouch was hoping this was his lucky break into a big club that his career so badly needed, he was wrong. In fact, he faced intense media scrutiny during his first months, due to a frustrating goal drought spanning 19 matches and for almost four months, he couldn't find the back of the net. While being praised for his touch and overall play, his first goal for Liverpool remained elusive and the phrase, good touch for a big man, became a media cliché. Thankfully, the drought finally ended on December 3rd, 2005, when he scored against Wigan Athletic. The goal was initially credited as an own goal, but it was later awarded to Crouch on appeal, ending over 24 hours of football without him scoring. That season was defined by some crucial Crouch goals, notably a goal in the fifth round of the FA Cup against Manchester United, marking Liverpool's first FA Cup victory over them since the Liverpool Second World War. He also provided the assist of Gerrard's second goal in the FA Cup final that year, helping Liverpool win the trophy. Three months later, Crouch headed the winning goal in Liverpool's 2-1 victory over Chelsea in the FA Community Shield. Yeah, he was enjoying his time now, scoring his maiden Champions League as well that season, kick-starting his UEFA tally. 
Things were going great when just like that came the injuries. And this one was nasty. He broke his nose in a match against Sheffield United and despite playing a few games afterwards, he underwent surgery on March the 9th, 2007, which sidelined him for a month. But fear not, he made a hero's return, scoring his first club hat-trick in a 4-1 victory over Arsenal. This was a perfect hat-trick, featuring goals from his right foot, left foot and head. He later played in the 2007 UEFA Champions League final as well, coming on as a substitute in Liverpool's defeat to Milan as he finished the season as Liverpool's top scorer in all competitions with 18 goals. The next season didn't bring some good news for him early on, with Crouch seeing fewer opportunities due to the arrival of new strikers including Fernando Torres. Nevertheless, he scored in a Champions League qualifying win against Toulouse in August, marking his eighth goal in 10 Champions League appearances. He also netted the first and last goals in an 8-0 thrashing of Besiktas in November. In April, he scored a crucial goal in a 1-1 draw against Arsenal, helping Liverpool secure fourth place ahead of rivals Everton. Time became the main culprit again as his struggle to find more time on the field led him to Portsmouth, who swooped in, signing him for $11 million. His first goal upon his return came early as he netted in a 3-0 victory against Everton at Goodison Park. His first home goal came against Tottenham Hotspur, while on October 2nd, he netted twice in extra time in a UEFA Cup match against Vitoria de Guimarães, helping Portsmouth reach the group stages. Crouch ended the 2008-9 season with 16 goals in 46 appearances, as Portsmouth finished 14th in the league. It was clear he had much more talent, with all due respect and the calibre of Portsmouth. The help arrived as Spurs rescued him signing him on for a five-year contract. He made his debut in a pre-season friendly against Olympiacos and appeared as a substitute in Tottenham's season opener against Liverpool, while scoring his first goal for Spurs in a 5-1 League Cup over Doncaster Rovers and followed it up with his first league goal in a 2-1 victory against Birmingham City. In May, Crouch scored a crucial late goal against Manchester City in a match dubbed the £15 million game securing Tottenham's first ever Champions League berth, and then went on one step further, scoring a hat-trick against Young Boys, helping Spurs reach the Champions League group stage. And he wasn't done yet. On February the 15th, 2011, he scored the winning goal in the Champions League second round, first leg match against Milan at the San Siro, with Spurs progressing to the quarter-finals after a goalless draw in the reverse fixture at White Hart Lane. His career took another turn for the good this time as Stoke City signed him for a then-club record fee of £10 million, potentially rising to £12 million on a four-year contract. Crouch scored his first goal for the Potters in a 1-1 draw against Manchester United, making Stoke the sixth Premier League club he scored for. He continued to find the net against various teams, including Arsenal, Maccabi Tel Aviv, Blackburn Rovers and Wolverhampton Wanderers before a virus sidelined him during the Christmas period. His return to football was iconic, as his brace meant that he had surpassed 100 Premier League goals. Then came the goal he calls his greatest goal ever, a spectacular long-distance volley against Manchester City. He scored 13 goals that season, prompting Tony Pulis to advocate for his inclusion in the England squad for the UEFA Euro 2012, while also getting crowned as Stokes Player of the Year and winning the Goal of the Season award. The next season started well for him with five goals in seven matches, although the good start was halted when he lost several teeth in an accidental kick from Fabrizio Colaccini, requiring corrective surgery. Seasons changed, managers changed, but Crouch remained the same, ending another season as Stoke's top scorer with 10 goals in 38 appearances. As Stoke finished ninth, he expressed his desire to finish his career at Stoke and signed a two-year contract extension in January 2015. Then came the moment he had been waiting for so dearly, his record equaling 46th headed goal. He equalled Alan Shearer's record and surpassed it with a header against Liverpool on May 24, 2015, as Stoke finished 9th again. The next season had another legendary moment for him as he scored his 100th Premier League goal, becoming the oldest player to reach this milestone. On November 20, 2017, Crouch set the record for the most Premier League substitute appearances, coming off the bench for the 143rd time against Brighton and Ove Albion. He also became Stoke City's leading Premier League goalscorer, surpassing Jonathan Walter's record of 43 goals. 
all of these goals and he still couldn't stay Stoke, who got relegated to the championship. Was Crouch done? He already had an illustrious career. He must have been done. But was he? He was not. Crouch strutted into Burnley like a boss in January 2019, swapping places with Sam Vokes in a classic player exchange. Fast forward to February the 2nd, and there he was, making his grand entrance as a sub in the 76th minute against Southampton. And guess what? He shook things up immediately. He has a knack of shaking things up, you know, and helped Burnley get their first penalty in what felt like eternity, but all things come to an end. And after the season wrapped up, he bid farewell to professional football on July the 12th, 2019, at the sprightly age of 38.